India's railway system, despite being vast and bustling, has struggled to keep up with the country's rapid economic growth. Trains are often slow, overcrowded, old and uncomfortable, unlike neighboring nations with efficient high-speed rail networks. To bridge this gap, India is constructing its own bullet train, inspired by Japan's system. This ambitious project involves complex engineering, including elevated viaducts and undersea tunnels. While it could elevate India's status on the global stage and pave the way for a nationwide high-speed rail network, questions arise about its necessity given existing railway challenges and other pressing priorities in the country. India's Railway Infrastructure India boasts one of the world's oldest railway networks, dating back more than 160 years. Despite some recent improvements, train travels in India remains risky, with tens of thousands of railway-related accidents resulting in global attention each year. The scale of these accidents is striking, with over 12 million daily commuters. In June 2023, India witnessed one of its worst-ever train disasters when a signaling failure in Odisha led to a collision and derailment of three trains, resulting in hundreds of fatalities and over 1,000 injuries. This tragic event raised significant concerns once again about the safety of India's expensive but aging railway infrastructure, which ranks as the fourth largest rail network globally, covering almost 70,000 kilometers in total. India, now the world's most populous nation surpassing China, depends on its extensive railway system to transport over a billion tons of freight and more than 8 billion passengers each year. Traveling within India can be challenging, not just by train, but also due to the country's notorious traffic if you opt to go for road travel. While domestic flights have become an alternative for many, millions still rely on the railways as their primary mode of transportation. Despite the growing aviation sector, the railways continue to play a vital role in the lives of many Indians. Recognizing this, the government is taking steps to modernize and expand the railway infrastructure, aiming to transform it from somewhat inadequate to state-of-the-art, with significant progress already underway. India is making significant progress on its first high-speed rail system, with plans to eventually connect all major cities in the country. Presently. Construction is underway for a single line along India's western edge, which presents immense challenges. This line, linking Mumbai and Ahmedabad, two major economic and industrial centers, spans just over 500 kilometers and includes the construction of 12 stations. Traveling by car between these cities takes around 9 hours excluding traffic, while the existing railway journey takes 6 hours. The new high-speed rail, with a top speed of nearly 200 miles per hour, more than twice as fast as India's current fastest trains, will reduce the travel time to about two hours. This state-of-the-art system will use Shinkansen trains, the same models found on Japan's renowned rail network. Furthermore, various components of the system, such as signaling, will be provided by Japan. Japan is also involved in training Indian workers and supplying a significant portion of the funding for this project. Japan has provided loans totaling 650 billion yen, equivalent to over $4.5 billion since 2017. This partnership is valuable due to Japan's expertise in this field, making them an essential guide for this critical infrastructure project. Having a partner who can offer guidance and expertise is more important than anyone who can monetarily benefit you in projects. How is it being built? India aims to not only modernize its railways with faster and safer trains, but also aspires to achieve full development and global superpower status. Establishing a high-speed rail network that facilitates efficient movement of people and goods between major cities and regions is a significant stride in that direction. So, how is this new railway being constructed? Especially considering one end of the line serves massive, densely populated city with over 20 million residents. The key approach involves elevating about 92% of the track on viaducts and bridges. This approach allows the railway to be constructed over rivers and existing infrastructure, minimizing environmental impact and potentially simplifying land acquisition. However, not all aspects are straightforward. 
One of the most significant engineering challenges is presented by Thane Creek, a large inlet east of Mumbai, the only location on the entire route obstructed by a large body of water. To avoid this obstacle, the decision was made to go underground rather than continue building high above the surface. The result will be India's first undersea rail tunnel, stretching 7 kilometers in length, with a total underground section spanning 21 kilometers. It will be a single tunnel, but with enough space to accommodate two trains, one in each direction, requiring a 13-meter diameter, which is pretty big. Most of the construction will be carried out using tunnel boring machines, with the exception of a 5-kilometer section built using the new Austrian tunneling method. In simple terms, the construction process involves drilling and blasting to create a tunnel, followed by adding ground supports, reinforcements, and a concrete shell with waterproofing lining. This method is suitable for shorter tunnels in different ground conditions. The project is currently more than 30% complete, but it won't be finished until at least 2028. This is a significant delay from the initial plan, which aimed for completion by 2022. What went wrong then? Raising most of the railway tracks on piers has helped speed up the land acquisition process, a common challenge in railway construction. However, it hasn't completely solved the issue. In early 2022, the government organization in charge of the project acquired nearly all the land in Gujarat state. In Maharashtra, the acquisition was only 75% complete due to legal disputes with landowners. Currently, both regions have almost 100% land acquisition, but it took longer than planned to reach this stage. The project also faced challenges when the government in Maharashtra changed, bringing an anti-bullet train coalition, even if only temporarily. This new government prioritized other projects it deemed more beneficial to a larger population, questioning the bullet train's impact compared to traditional railway projects. They argued that the bullet train, seen as a capitalist venture, would benefit fewer people than conventional railway projects. Even though the government favoring the bullet train replaced the previous one, the debate on whether it's suitable for everyone still lingers. Even after completion, the project needs to be highly popular among passengers to justify the significant investment. An estimate suggests that around 50 million people must use the new line every year for it to be financially viable. Moreover, there's a question about whether the authorities are prioritizing things correctly. Should India be investing in a new high-speed railway when there are evident issues with the current existing infrastructure? The national government believes so. Their plan is to establish a nationwide network, starting with this project. Feasibility studies have been conducted for potential routes connecting major Indian cities such as Mumbai to New Delhi, Mumbai to Chennai, and New Delhi to Kolkata. While this project is exciting, given the slow progress, the people of India are likely not overly optimistic just yet. As we've witnessed in the past, infrastructure like this has tremendous power. Other countries have utilized it to drive economic growth and propel their development to the next level. India stands on the verge of following in their footsteps with this new railway, but there is still a long journey ahead. And that wraps up today's episode. In today's age where time is more valuable than anything, it might be convenient to have such speedy transportation. Would you agree? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and ring that notification bell to keep posted for more interesting videos like this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.